This is Sensei Buck Snyder. I'm a martial artist, nature lover, and total nerd. Come have fun with Sensei in the Wild. All right, guys, we got an awesome snake video today. Look at this little guy I have here in my hands. This is the broadband water snake. Look at him right here. He's just a little tiny one. I'm going to put him in this tank where we can see him slither around. I just got him out of the water, so he's kind of sticking to the tank a little bit. But let's talk about this beautiful snake. First of all, this is our 10th snake video to make, and I could not have wished for a better snake. This is a snake that's been on my uh, list to catch for a long time, and so tonight we came across him, and I'm just so happy that we did. Because if you look at his colors, it's unlike any other snake I've ever caught. The colors are bright red and orange on it. It almost looks like he's like on fire. I like to think of him as like almost like a fire snake. Okay guys, we moved into the other room, but uh, so anyway, we're talking about the broadband water snake, and this little one here is between seven and nine inches long, which is the size of a newborn. So I think this one has been born maybe sometime in the last month. They're typically born in the month of July, and uh, that would put him about a month old at this time. And um, if you look at him, he's absolutely gorgeous. I was talking about the coloration of him a minute ago, and uh, he's got these stripes on him that make him so pretty and stand out from all the other water snakes in my opinion. And uh, I've caught a lot of different snakes over the years, but to me, this is hands down the most beautiful I have ever physically caught. Now, I've seen different ones, of course, at the zoo or in pet stores or at trade shows, but that I've actually physically caught, this one is hands down the most beautiful. And uh, he is non-venomous, and as I said before, you can tell because he's got a round pupil, which in America means he's not a pit viper or a coral snake. And some people may confuse him with the coral snake because of his coloration. And just at a glance, you may think it because of these stripes. But if you look at a picture of a coral snake side by side, they are drastically different looking. So anyway, this guy is a water snake. And they tend to be, water snakes in general tend to be very aggressive if threatened. If you try to hold them, they'll strike and they'll strike over and over and over. And their bites are painful or, uh, or less painful depending on what kind of snake it is. And, but this one, because he is so young, I don't think he's gotten his aggressive streak yet. So uh, he's actually a very passive little snake and he allows me to handle him, which is very fortunate. Um, he, he primarily eats minnows tadpoles, and frogs, and so he spends two-thirds of his life in the water. He's semi-aquatic, and uh, they normally hunt during the day, but this time of the year when it's so hot, they actually switch and hunt at night, uh, which is what he's doing right now. And um, they can grow between two and three feet long, and the females tend to be bigger. And uh, one thing about the females is they do give birth to live snakes, which is another one on my video that gives, uh, we, we've talked about several snakes so far on my channel, and uh, they've all given birth to live snakes, which is rare in the snake world. Most snakes have eggs, but uh, this one does give live birth. And here's the thing, they can give birth to as many as 57 snakes at one time. So that's a pretty big clutch of snakes. But um, anyway, this little guy hunts just like all other snakes with his tongue. He senses odors on his tongue, brings it back into his head, and he registers it. So he doesn't use his nose for smelling, he uses it for breathing. And speaking of breathing, these little guys, because they are semi-aquatic, can swim in the water. And when they're underwater, they can hold, one's been noted to hold its breath for as long as 20 minutes. So that's a pretty long time. They still need oxygen. They can't breathe underwater, but they can hold it for long periods of time. And um, this little snake here, if you look, I'll pick him up again. One thing that's unique to him is he's got this checker pattern on the bottom of his belly. And that is a unique feature to this snake that looks like this with his colors. But just check out his coloration here. Let's see if I can get him to cooperate here. Look how pretty he is. I always think of him, like I said earlier, that he's a fire snake because the little uh, stripes here look like they're fire. It's just a beautiful snake. And look at the color of his little tongue right here. It's a pretty red. Check him out. Now, if you look at his little head here, his head's just slightly thicker than his neck. So that's his normal shape. But if, oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. That's one reason why you don't handle snakes a lot. Look, he just threw up a minnow that he had eaten. Poor little thing. I'll put him back down now. And I think we'll clean that up before uh, he gets a chance to slime on it. So we'll be right back. Now 
we just cleaned up the tank. Uh, little, the little minnow that he had thrown up is cleaned up now. So here's the thing. Uh, even though that is gross and a little bit funny, uh, that's a common thing with snakes. If they eat and you handle them too much after eating, uh, they will regurgitate their food. Their bodies are basically like one giant tube, and if you mess them too much, it's almost like squeezing toothpaste out. And unfortunately, I didn't know he had eaten yet, or I wouldn't have handled him as much, and that did cause him to throw up. So throwing up the fish does not do anything to him. It doesn't hurt him. Only thing is now, he has one less piece of food in his body, so he does need to go out and catch another minnow to make up for that one. So um, I do feel bad that he threw up the fish because of that, but there is no lasting uh negative effect other than that he needs to catch another fish now so anyway uh i was telling y'all about his head the thing is he often gets confused for the water moccasin also known as the cotton mouth and the reason they get confused is when they're young like this the colors are very vibrant but as they get older the colors fade and they actually resemble a water moccasin in color a lot more also one of their defense mechanisms is they'll take their heads and they make it triangular. They'll flare out their jaw to try to resemble the water moccasin to scare off a predator. And while that may work in the wild against other animals, humans see that and they think it's water moccasin. So they'll uh, decapitate or crush this little snake. And these guys do live by water, bodies of water, ponds or lakes or streams, but they will come in people's yards. If their uh, area runs short on food, they'll come looking for them and if you have a yard, especially one that you water a lot, the moisture attracts this snake. And another thing is the moisture also attracts amphibians, such as frogs, which this snake can sense and smell, and that'll draw them to their, your yard. So people will kill it too because they see this snake in their yard, and their first panic reaction is to kill it. So uh, that's so sad for this little beautiful guy because he honestly is harmless, full grown. They get between two and three feet, so he's just a baby, but somebody would still kill him this small, even though he's not full grown. So. We are going to take him tomorrow and put him, uh, I'm going to take him someplace far away from humans, but in a safe, isolated location so he can uh, grow up happy and healthy. Okay, so we'll be back in a minute as we turn him free. All right, guys, we're out here at night and this is the spot where we caught the little broadband water snake. So we're going to turn him free right here. If you look out in the water right out here by this tree, there is a ton of minnows, and lots and lots of minnows out here. So he'll go feast on those and be all fat and happy. So got the little snake right here. Gotta be real careful handling him. And we're gonna put him right here on the ground and let, let him take off. Let's see when he hits that water. In his sweet little time, but this is where he's from, so he probably smells and recognizes his own home. Yeah, he's certainly taking his time. <laughs> All right, he's getting close to it now. All right, well, I think he'll be safe over there. So, all right, guys, well, that was it for the little broadband water snake from both of us. Always keep it wild.